Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today's video we'll be taking a look at Creative's budget masterpieces. These are the Creative T10s. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video we'll be taking a look at Creative Labs T10s. Now, these are a slightly older model, now. they've been around for a little while. But there's a reason why they keep on making them, and that is because they're actually pretty darn good. Now at the moment, these retail in the UK for around about the £35 mark, but I've been really lucky, picked these up on a Facebook deal for £10. So obviously my review based on £10, take that with whatever pinch of salt you want to, but I'm going to be assessing them as if I've paid the full price for them. Now this is actually perfect for us because we can see how they age, what they're like, do they scratch easily? All those kinds of things, which you want to know in long-term tests, which you can't always find out from brand new product reviews. So let's get on with it. So what are the Creative T10s? Well, they are desktop speakers. They are mains powered. And you do get a mains brick included in the packaging. I'm assuming there is a little indentation there. So it looks like that slides out and you can replace that with the suitable unit for your particular region. This is UK, so we've got a three pin plug on there. And the wattage of this one is, I believe, is going to be 12 volts, 1500 milliamp hours. So not too bad at all. The cable you get on here is roughly about two meters long. So you don't have to be directly tethered to the actual wall socket. So yeah, you've got a pretty decent length on there if I do that in half. So yeah, that's a two meters for sure. Also, you get included a 3.5 mil jack plug both ends. So this is designed to plug into a PC or into kind of like a Walkman or a portable device, anything that has the standard TRS connection on there. That is pretty much it as far as I can tell from the actual packaging, what you get included. Essentially, there's not really anything else you would actually need anyway, so that's absolutely fine. So let's take a look at the speakers themselves. Now the speakers actually, I like them. They do look really, really nice and they actually do look more expensive than they are in my personal opinion. They're actually pretty weighty as well, which is generally a good sign when it comes to speakers. Now hopefully it's just not a big blob of metal in the bottom of there, but it's unlikely. Generally companies won't go to that hassle of putting a lump of metal in there unless it actually needs to be in there for obviously transportation costs and all that kind of usual stuff. So they are yeah, pretty weighty and also on the bottom you've got those four rubberized feet to keep things nice and in place. And when they're actually on the desk they don't really want to move at all, which is excellent because speakers do have a tendency to move, especially ones which have a little bit of bass, which these certainly do. And we've got a little bass port on the top to let some of those bass tones out. And these have got a frequency response of around about 80 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. So we're not going quite down into the subsonics, down to the 20 hertz which uh, actually does benefit these speakers. You often find with speakers, if they do tend to go down into those subsonic frequencies, generally the drivers don't actually have the quality to handle it properly. So you get that kind of really farty bass. It doesn't sound great. So ideally you want to have a little bit of control. So by limiting the actual frequencies available to the speaker, you're going to get a lot more control and a lot more precise bass. This is a twin speaker setup, so we've got our mid-range and bass, and also we've got our high-range tweeter, which is a metal dome type design. Also on the front of this particular one, this is the control unit, you've got the power and volume, so you've got a nice clicky on-off there, and you can turn that around, and the control actually, I'm not too sure exactly how old these speakers are, I imagine they're a couple of years old, but actually still the, uh, the volume still feels exactly as it should do. On the next side, we've got our tone control. So that's a combination of adjusting your treble and your bass. This works, so if it's in the lowest position, that's the kind of the lowest point. As you add up, that adds into kind of full bass. And then when you go to the second part, that adds in your treble. So if you're someone who likes to have all the bass you can, but a little bit of treble, so it's not too hissy, then around about three quarters, maybe about five eighths, should be absolutely perfect for you. And certainly in my testing, that is what I find it to be like. On the side of the speaker, we've got some inputs and an output. So you've got an auxiliary input. So if you've got another device you want to add into it, so like an old MP3 player or something like that, you can do, again, whatever you choose to. There isn't a toggle switch. So whatever's plugged in there will be the prominent device playing. So if you want to listen to your PC, if you've got it plugged into a PC, you will have to remove that jack plug. Also, there's a headphone socket as well. So if you've got these on your desk and maybe you've got your PC kind of out of arm's reach and you've, it's really awkward to plug in your headphones, that actually makes it quite a nice, easy pass-through location. Looking at the satellite speaker, again, exactly the same, apart from the controls on the bottom, again, exactly the same weight, pretty much. So, yeah, not too sure how that's worked out, because you'd imagine most of the electrics and the amplifier would be in this one, but they are 
pretty much identically weighted. One downside of this particular speaker is there is a captive cable on the back there, which then runs off into like a funnel jack, which then goes into the back section of the T10 Master. And on the back of here, you've got your audio input, you've got your 12 volts input, and you've got your speaker input. So literally all you do is plug that into there, plug in your power, plug in your auxiliary, and you're ready to go to the races. So I think that pretty much wraps up what is actually in the box and what they're all about. Best thing to do now is to plug them in and actually give them a test. Okay, so we've got them set up, nice and easy to do, and literally only took a minute or so to set up. Now I've got some of my YouTube creator library here um, queued up, various different types of tracks, different types of audio, so you can get an idea of what they actually sound like. Now in the Windows control panel, I'm gonna set the speaker level to about 80%, so there's not any real distortion coming out of the actual jack plug, which is uh, coming out here. And I've got the speaker set to probably about a quarter at the moment. So we'll see what that's like. I may have to turn it down. Again, we'll see what it's like. Again, I have selected some tunes, various different types. So obviously it may not be your musical type. And obviously this is only a mono microphone. So it's not the best way of testing them, but you can get some sort of idea of what they're like and also how they handle certain sounds. So again, I've got a, uh, a few different types of music and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so there's a little bit of, um, well, they call it hip hop and rap, inspirational music by Ramzoid. So you get an idea there for some of the bass tones. Again, that was a, a bass drop in there, which hopefully has come through okay on the microphone. And actually it surprised me how well it handled it. It didn't um, give you that kind of horrible farty noise that you get from some of these speakers, especially cheaper ones. It just seemed really controlled and uh, the subsonics were lacking, definitely. But I could definitely feel it in the desk and also actually in my feet, weirdly. I'm not really sure how that's worked out, but yeah, the sound does seem to be traveling and it sounds very good, very controlled. All the frequencies are there. So we'll try something now with some vocals in. I'm gonna regret this. Come on, it is nearly Christmas. You can definitely hear all the individual instruments. Christmas tree, Christmas tree. How wonderful. So you can hear there, um, definitely heard a triangle in there, and I dare say that if you were in a Christmas play at any point in your life, yeah, you were probably on the triangle if you're a geeky person like myself. Um, sound wise, yeah, can't complain there. Very clear, very crisp. The audio is excellent. The tweeters do a fantastic job. And actually, there's not really any bass in that track as such, but it still came through and felt really nice and warm. So let's try something else now. Let's try a, uh, a bright rock track. Now, all these tracks you can try for yourself, so if you want to hear what they actually sound like in real life on your system, um, I'll put a list of all the tracks that I'm playing in this. Basically, they're in the YouTube Creator Library, so they're free access. So this is called Locally Sourced from uh, Jason Farnham, and this is called a Bright Rock track. I have actually used this before on an old video that some of you may have seen years and years ago. really clear, really sharp. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's try um, some angry rock this time. Don't know what this is gonna sound like. So again, yeah, can't fault it, very well controlled. The mid-range stroke bass drivers 
do actually seem to be doing a remarkably good job. Now, obviously, I don't know how exactly old these speakers are. I'd imagine they've got to be a couple of years, like you said. So they could have been used and abused, but they still sound pretty pretty decent. I'm quite quite impressed with that. So let's try uh, something else. This is a bit of country. So if country is your thing. You can definitely pick up the instruments. Yeah, very clear. I, these are going to be ideal. If you're using these as maybe kind of sh cheap studio monitors, if you're a YouTuber and you're a content creator and you want to listen to your own playback and add your tracks, they're going to be fantastic for that. If you're working from maybe a laptop or your desktop, having these, you can really get a, a good response of what it's going to sound like without them being like a kind of like a disco speaker, that kind of thing. So let's try something uh, a little bit jazzy, see how it handles with that. I must be getting old or something. I quite like, enjoyed that. That was good fun. <laughs> um, regardless of how much fun I'm having, I think they sounded brilliant. Again, all the instruments, you can quite clearly hear them going on there. You've got the cymbals, hi-hats. Uh, there's a bass drum, I guess, in the back. All these kinds of things. Yeah, it just sounds really good. And the bass really does nicely roll off. No, no problems there. Now, one thing which a lot of speakers struggle with, which most people don't know, is classical music. Classical music is actually really, really difficult to reproduce and get it accurately because there's so much detail in the instruments themselves and because quite often there's singular instruments playing rather than being like a mishmash of sounds, it's actually very difficult to reproduce. So, um, yeah, let's give it a go. <laughs> This starts off very quiet and then gets quite explosive. quite enough of that. So I'll let you guys be the, uh, the deciders. What do you think? Actually, for me personally, for £10, yeah, this is a cracking deal Deal of the, uh, well, better than most of the Black Friday deals, to be completely honest with you. For £10, yeah, I've got no complaints whatsoever. Paying the full price, £35 or £40, as they sometimes are, is the recommended retail price. Again, for this quality of speaker with nice weight, nice cabinets, etc. Yeah, I don't think you can go too far wrong. I will try and put some affiliated links in the video description, so if you do want to pick up some brand new ones, then obviously you can do from Amazon and all those kinds of places. And personally, I would say keep a lookout for things like um, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, whatever it is in your local region. Look out for them, you may be able to pick up a bargain. Now in terms of longevity, this is probably one of the interesting things. I would say from a sound and actual quality and construction point of view, it's difficult to date them, so um, yeah. That one, I'm kind of open to experimentation as things go on. But certainly, I can see the gloss black front. Hopefully, you can pick it up a little bit in some of the uh, the B-roll and also the reflections there. It is in still in relatively good nick. There's a few marks and scratches on there. Um, it's kind of like a satin matte black cabinet, and the front is like a piano black, so that will show up some marks. They are they do have a tendency to scratch, but the actual Front section, the uh, the grill over the speaker there actually looks to be in very good condition. There is some marks on there which possibly you'd be able to polish out if you really, really wanted to. But again, I don't know exactly how hard a life they've got, but they were just thrown in a box when I was given them. So they have been bounced around a little bit and they seem to have done pretty well on it. So overall, um, yeah, Creative T10 Inspires definitely gets a thumbs up from me. So 
If it's given a thumbs up from me, hopefully it's going to give a thumbs up for you. And if you want to do some more thumbs up, don't forget, click on the like button underneath. And while you're at it, click on the subscribe button and all that usual kind of YouTube stuff. So that's going to wrap this one up. Look forward to your comments below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.